Greetings, Chess Home Skillets. Jeffrey Baffle here. It's October 2nd or thereabouts. Uh, been a while since I've done a video. Back at it. Uh, woo! So I would like to show you my assistant who is inspecting the materials for today's video. This is Ping. And as you can see, she's trying to eat my books and rub herself on my books. Uh, that is not appropriate behavior, young lady. These are not to eat. Oh, what a silly goose. Okay, all right, let me settle the camera down here and get going on the video here. So as I said, been a while, I'm back at it, woohoo, excited. Today's video is, ha, ah, thank you, Ping. Today's video is this. Do, 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 do. This is a chess book series um, from long ago, and I am highly recommending it, even though it's probably 40, the books in the series are 40, 45, 50 years old. Um, but um, they are well worth your attention. Now, obviously, uh, you can search for these uh, on Amazon.com, eBay, um, antiquarianbook.com, um, wherever your favorite used bookstore, uh, your favorite used book source is. Um, now, sometimes you can catch these on actually on a, at a library sale physically or at a bookstore, a used bookstore that you have, but your best, <coughs> excuse me, bang for your buck is going to be an online search. And what is this series? This is it's from uh, two different publishers, actually. It's from Chess Digest or Batsford, as you can see. Uh, and I don't know who bought out who. Chess Digest bought out Batsford. Batsford bought out Chess Digest. I don't know. But these are from like the, the 70s and maybe even in, er, into the early 80s. And they're descriptive notation. Uh, so if that's an issue for you, you know, beware of that. And uh, none of them had computer assisted analysis like all the books have today. So, um, and there, uh, I will tell you that though, the, the, one of the nice things about this is they are solid hardcover editions. Uh, the print is a little small for me, uh, but my eyes are kind of probably worse than a lot of people's eyes. But let me show you what the print looks like. Um, the authors were various international masters and grandmasters. Uh, names that you may not recognize, but that you might. Uh, let me show you a couple of these here. Uh, John Watson, you, rec you recognize those. Yeah, Raymond Keane. Uh, yeah, there. Italian game. Sicilian flank game. Uh, probably in this series, there were probably about 20, maybe 30 of these. Uh, pretty much covered the entire range of chess openings. Um, and uh, so what is the value of an opening that only had human analysis with all the errors and mistakes that humans are prone to and in descriptive notation? Well, descriptive notation, if you're like me, I, I converted to algebraic no notation probably 30 years ago. Uh, descriptive notation is a little bit uh, off-putting to me to, to read today, but it, it you flow back into it pretty easily. If you've uh, the uh, descriptive notation is not that much of an issue. You could it's a little bit like going from regular Coke to Diet Coke. I mean, you're going to notice the difference, but if you keep with it, you're not going to notice it for a while, and you're going to reap the benefits of it. Uh, now, the human analysis having errors in it, yeah, um, but. What this is for me is it forms the basis or the bedrock of my research and exploration into, uh, into the openings. Um, I obviously, I think that one of the good ideas you can do is to have an engine looking over your shoulder as you look at these lines. And uh, when you have, when you come upon an error, which I'm sure you will, uh, and the, it may even be in the, in the engines, like if you're using Fritz, um, or stockfish, it may already be in their opening book, the correct line. Uh, but if it, the engine catches it, uh, 
and you have to kind of like enter that in the margin or make a post-it note, that's going to drive home the message and help you retain the knowledge of that line better than simply just absorbing something from a computer sanitized book. Uh, it's going to force you to learn the material even better than as if everything was perfect from the beginning. So you're going to find lines that are left out of today's and today's theory. And um, like I said, it, these are gorgeous books. You're going to be able to get them for pennies on the dollar of what they were sold when they were even 40 years ago. Uh, and they, uh, I don't. There's some of these are in paperback. I wouldn't recommend these. Just spend a couple of dollars extra and get this gorgeous uh, hardcover volume. They're usually about 150 pages. Um, and like I said, if you, it may be some of the exotic openings are not covered from today's. Uh, practice, but uh, you're going to find almost every opening that you could want. You've seen the, the eight ones that I, I have, eight or nine of them, and I'm slowly adding more. Uh, like I said, you want to go to Amazon.com Amazon .com or eBay uh, and make these the basis and expand and correct these as you need to. You'll really love them. They are called the Contemporary Chess Openings. And like I said, two main publishers, Chess Digest or Batsford. Uh, that's what you want to look for, contemporary chess openings, and get the hardcover editions. You're not going to be sorry. Uh, that's all for me today. Have a wonderful day. Stop.